Hey, everybody. How y'all doing? It's good to see your shining faces. Man, you know, I, I'm still a little bit trying to transition out of worship. Like, wow, that was really awesome. It was great to worship with you guys. And, and uh, you know, I, I, uh, I had a word this morning that I know was for somebody specific, but as I keep sharing it, it you just, uh, you, the word was, you're going to see the glory of God. And uh, I felt like it was a word for us back there when we were praying in the green room and just uh, it, even over in the prayer room earlier than that. And uh, just, I would just say, this is how we're moving forward, you guys. We are moving forward in worship and in prayer. The Lord has ignited a word in our movement right now, ignite the boiler room. And that's, that's how we've always moved forward. That's how the church got started uh, nearly 30 years ago was in the place of prayer, was praying. And the two realities, you see it first in the place of prayer and praying it, and then we get to see it happen. So uh, that's just, just getting us started here. <laughs> uh, open your Bibles, if you would, to Isaiah 55. Again, talk about another word. I, we really feel like this was, has been dramatically given to us. I feel like it's a word for, for us as a church. And we're, doing, we're spending four weeks on it right now, right here at the beginning of the semester. Four weeks on it. Now, I think it's a word. I, I started sharing it with some pastors in the city. I think it's a word for the city. I think it's a word for the church right now. It just it's a, it's a wake-up kind of time. It's a time for us to go deeper with our roots, to wake up and to be alive to the Lord, to get ready so, for the next wave of whatever might come that would leave us unprepared. Uh, we're starting to hear the, the Matthew 25 word about get ready, you know, and so it's just, I'm not trying to be overly heavy here, but it just like, man, let's, let's, let's press into the Lord. It's time. And uh, worship times like that, just the, they make me all the more uh, convinced, you know, that this is what the Lord is doing. Last week, we started out by saying that Isaiah was speaking to the Israelites in exile. So he was speaking to them, and they're in Babylon. And we also made the connection, there's a lot of Babylonish things that we live in the midst of in our culture right now that would drag us away from the Lord, that would be a distraction or a temptation, or just get us going toward another idol altogether. And so, uh, where was I at? Uh, uh, idols, yeah, yeah, and not only just drag us away, but even like, think of e Egypt as another kind of type of, of Babylon, it's like bondage, slavery, addictions, you know, anybody that's ever struggled with that more because of COVID, I was like six or seven of us, you know, <laughs> and uh, so it's a deal, you know, we need this word right now, we need to uh, respond to the Lord. You know, as a follow-up from last week, someone sent me a link from Rabbi Jason Sobel. I'm not familiar with him, but I like him. I, I, it was a great, great word. It was powerful. He was explaining the Feast of the Tabernacles, Feast of Tabernacles, which I was actually talking about last week. And he said, look, that whole thing was about is after Israel wandered in the desert for 40 years, then they started celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles. So it's been going on for thousands of years, and it was about celebrating God's presence, God's protection, and God's provision while they're out there wandering around in the desert, cloud by day, protecting them from the sun, fire by night, cold desert, heating the place up, you know, and his presence is there with them. Manna from heaven, what is it? That's what Hebrew word manna means. <laughs> I keep going. Um, uh, what is it? It's this bread that's coming down from heaven. And, uh, and also the water. That's a big deal. The water from the rock. And Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 and 4, explains what that water from the rock is. It's verse 3. They all ate the same spiritual food. They all drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. So, yeah, there's just, there's always more. Let's just, can we just say that together? There's always more. There's always more in this. And so the guy goes on and says, yeah, Feast of Tabernacles, 
One of the things, it was seven days, and the priests would go from the temple down to the pool of Siloam and get some water, and they would take it back, and they'd do this ceremony on the altar there in the temple, which is just, it's, it's about water. It's, about the, it's a joyful feast of celebration. Then on the seventh day, the greatest day of the feast, they would go, and they would walk around the altar seven times. And he goes, this guy's talking, he goes, imagine the chutzpah. Imagine the chutzpah of Jesus standing up on the last and greatest day of the feast and saying, all who are thirsty, come to me. <laughs> I just was like, whoa, wow, and I will give you living water that will flow from within you. And by this, he was talking about the Holy Spirit that would be poured out later. So I just, that's just a, another little wrap up from last week. I just thought that was incredible. I've got to say it, right? So, Feast of Tabernacles. All right. So, this week we're talking about listening to the Lord. You know, if we find ourselves in a Babylon-ish kind of time or an Egypt-ish kind of time, making up words as I go, um, we need to be asking ourselves, what is the state of our listening? How are, how are you listening are you listening, really listening? Do you have ears that are really hearing right now? Eyes that are really seeing? Because listening is not the same as hearing. You can hear something without listening, right? And so uh, my wife's uh, other job, besides just being married to me, <laughs> is that she's an audiologist. And so she helps people hear. And she's got incredible glory of God stories, making things right. Hopefully, we're all doing stuff where we can express the kingdom and help make things right. And, and helping people here is one of those things. And so she'll see the lights come on or people start crying or, you know, just because they can hear for the first time or the, you know, the, the, the families behind them going because they can't hear good and now they can hear and the, their mom is cheering or whatever. And... Uh, so she said, but sometimes it takes longer for some people because they won't stop talking. So she's trying to help them. She knows what the answer is, that the next step is, but they won't stop talking. And because that's the way they do things, and, and it's even talking real loud sometimes. So it's lots of talking loud, loud talking, and it takes longer to hear, to actually listen, than it would have if they had stopped talking. Can I get a witness out there? I'm just trying to share a little story here that might be something like we live through in real life because we're talking too much. Rich Velotis, and Rich, I'm giving you a pitch for the second week. Uh, like he's going to watch this. That's funny. <laughs> Good, beautiful, and kind. Get it. Get the book. If you read other things besides the Bible, and if you only read the Bible, that's awesome. You know, that's incredible. But if you do read other things, this would be a great one. Good, beautiful, and kind. And he says this about the need for silence in our world and to listen. He said, every second, on average, around 10,000 tweets are tweeted on Twitter, which amounts to 60,000 tweets per minute, more than 900 million tweets per day, and almost 3 billion tweets per year. Now, we're just talking about the platform of Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, there's the... I'm not going to tell you what the name of the site is, but there's a site that monitors that. It just, it makes you nervous just going to it. Don't go there right now. Stay engaged. But it's just, all the hits, all the interactions, all the talking, all the noise. Rich goes on and says, that's a lot of talking and tweeting. The problem with this is that often our lives are not saturated with silence, which means our speaking comes from a place not rooted in God, Instead of our words carrying power to expose the powers, announce the kingdom of God, and gently encourage those who are bruised by life, they too often resemble the words of the fallen world system. The question is, what do we, what do we need? And he's saying, my answer is contemplative prayer. We need more silence. We need a life of being with God. So... It, it really is good. When you think about all the I thinks that are happening out there. I was driving home after I just read this quote 
I was driving home, and I just, I was thinking about it, and I just, I started realizing, I think, 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 think. And in the middle of that, there's no room for silence and listening. With all of that opinion going on all over the world all the time. You know, I, I, I don't recommend everything from Watchman Nee, but I, I was helped by him early on in ministry. And one of the things he said was, where there's lots of opinions, it's hard to find the authority of God. Just, if you're talking, you can't be listening. If you're always expressing your opinion, where there's lots of opinions, it's hard to, find, to be sensitive to what the Lord is saying in the moment. So with that, let's stand up together and let's read the word of God. Isaiah 55. Oh Lord, would you open our ears, open our eyes, open our hearts as we read the word of God together. Come, all you who are thirsty. Come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy, eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread? And your labor on what does not satisfy. Listen, listen to me and eat what is good. And you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts and let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them to our God for he will freely pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are your ways my ways declares the Lord as the heavens are higher than the earth so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you and the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper. Instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. And this will be for the Lord's renown, for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Have a seat. It's good to read scripture. So here's what I'm trying to say today. And I'm just following the same form. I think I'm going to be able to do it all four weeks. But the main thing is that God is offering everyone a fresh invitation to listen to him and to share in the life and love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So Lord, do it today. We want to zoom out just like we did last week. We're going to zoom into Jesus and then we're going to take that lens and then look again at listening in uh, Isaiah 55. So let's look at it. Zoom out and remember the story. God's got a story and we just kind of dealt with Adam in Israel. That's just a good way to remember the story that Jesus was coming to do something about Adam and about Israel, right? It's a real short, simple way to remember that. But so listening in the garden, was there any listening in the garden going on? You know, God comes to Adam and Eve and says, look, it's all yours. Everything is yours. It's all for you. Just as not from this one tree. So think about that. Everything's yours, just not this one tree. And so when the enemy comes to them, it's, did God really say? He's questioning. I, I hadn't really looked at it through this lens, but he's questioning their listening. Did you hear God? Did you really hear him? And so he's questioning, did God really say? And of course, they eat the fruit. 
And then they decide that now, through their broken fallenness, the inward curve of sin in their lives, they now see God as someone they need to hide from. The loving God of creation who created us out of an overflow, a brilliant sunshine, like a sun of his love overflowing into creation and into relationship. And now he, in their brokenness, is someone they must hide from. It's really sad. But that question, then God comes to them and says, where are you? And I guess that's just a great question for right now. Where are you? Do you know where you're at? And I need to hear that. We all do. Where are you? Susie. Steve. I tried to say random names. That, <laughs> but put your name in the blank. Where are you? So that's Adam in the garden. And then uh, Israel. God makes a promise to Abraham. Israel, his family is going to bless all the, all the nations. going to be blessed with his family. But they end up getting into slavery in Egypt. God sets them free through the Red Sea, Passover, all of that. And they get this, they get the law that's given to them. And the greatest commandment that sums up it all, right? Jesus is asked in Mark 12, what's the greatest? It's this. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. And it is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and with all your strength. But it starts off this way. It starts off with listen. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. I'll stop there because I don't know any more in Hebrew. <laughs> but here, that, that word Shema is like God speaking to Israel and saying, and just think how many thousands, millions, and billions of times that prayer has been prayed in the last 4,000 years plus. Just think about that. All around the world, Jewish people praying that prayer. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai God. And the question is, Israel, and to us today, are you listening? Are you really listening? Now is the time to listen to be alert to the Lord. And so, you know, Israel blows it. We know the story. They're, they're just like the rest of humanity that needs a savior, you know, and they blow it. And the kings, they choose a king instead of God. And then the prophets come and say, you're, you're wandering, you're wandering. And if you keep on this track, you're going to end up in exile, just like it was promised. And they did. They ended up in exile. And so Isaiah is speaking to them in Babylonian captivity, in exile. And he's bringing these words of hope and words of invitation to a people that had been exiled. So that's zooming out. Now let's zoom in to Jesus. Zooming into Jesus. Jesus came to recapitulate the story of Adam and the story of Israel. He came to rewrite the story of Adam, our humanity together, and rewrite the story of Israel. Isn't that good news? So that's, that's what he did. So he's going to be doing some of the same things. You see some of these same things happening. Just like Adam is tempted in the garden to to not believe and to not listen to the word of God, Satan comes to Jesus out in the desert. He's 40 days fasting, and he says, turn these stones into bread. And what does Jesus say? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God, by listening. And I, I just can't overemphasize this enough. Like, this is actually God's plan for humanity is to be a listening people. Listen to the word of the Lord. And so um, think about it. Jesus says it like this. I can do nothing of my own initiative, John 5, 19. John 12, he says, I only do what I see the Father doing. I only say what I hear the Father saying. Like, so his entire life, like that's how he lived. And so that's really important when we talk about listening, hearing, because just in our world, Western enlightenment, scientific rationalism, all of those kinds of things, there are traditions within Christianity 
brothers and sisters, that de-emphasize spiritual gifts and de-emphasize hearing the Lord. Now, I've got some ideas why that happens. Some of those things I just said, worldview stuff. But you wouldn't get that idea if you were just looking to Jesus. Like, you don't come up with, oh, we don't need to be listening to God or God doesn't speak when Jesus is model humanity, recapitulating the whole story, and that's all he did. I mean, that's all he did was listen to God and respond to God. Just in love, look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. And we want to live a life that's more and more, we do it imperfectly, but that's more and more a life of being with him where we listen and respond And over a lifetime, then, that's abiding, and there's actually, you know, fruit starts popping out and growing because we're listening and abiding and staying with the Lord. So Jesus models that listening for us, and he wants us to listen. He says, I am the good shepherd. In John 10, my sheep will listen to me. My sheep know my voice. And so that's just, that's that's huge, right? Um, he's picking up on a theme from Ezekiel chapter, Ezekiel 34. So let's turn back there to Ezekiel 34. I want to read a couple verses. Verse 23. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. And he will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David will be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken. And then verse 15, I myself will tend my sheep and will have them lie down, declares the sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back, bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. Man, isn't that good news about what God does as the good shepherd coming in Jesus in the flesh? David, the son of David, the shepherd, all of those themes woven together. And so now go to John chapter 10, verse 10. We're looking at Jesus. John 10, verse 10. And late, so he's already said, I'm the good shepherd. My sheep know my voice. I've come that they have life. And down in verse 22, it's the festival of the, ded- of, of the dedication at Jerusalem. And so it's winter. And Jesus, that's Hanukkah, basically. So I'm not going to get into all the detail on that one right now. But, but, just, but Jesus is walking through He's already said, I'm the good shepherd, and now he's walking through Solomon's colonnade. So that's the part of the temple that's named after David's son. And so the people, the the leaders are going, are you the Messiah? Tell us plainly. And look at his answer. He said, I did tell you, verse 25, but you did not believe. The works I do in my father's name testify about me. But you do not believe because you're not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I will give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will ever, no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And so with that, they started trying to kill him. I'm going to stop there. Um, but, but it is a dramatic moment of Jesus confessing that he is the Messiah. I did tell you. I'm the good shepherd. I'm, I'm the son of David. I'm the Messiah. I'm the ruler. I'm the commander. And the last piece I want to touch on here before we go back to Isaiah 55 is just the idea of new covenant. Uh, Jeremiah prophesies in Jeremiah 31 that the new covenant is coming. I'm going to write my law on their hearts and on their minds, you know, and everybody's going to, people aren't going to say, know the Lord, because everybody's going to know the Lord. And I'm going to make myself real in this new covenant that's coming. Hebrews chapter 8 picks that up, quotes Jeremiah at length there, and then listen to the blessing at the end of Hebrews. Now may the God of peace who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, and equip you. May he equip you with everything good for doing his will, and may he strengthen you. May he work in us what is pleasing to him 
through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So when we're zooming into Jesus, what we see is that, you know, he is listening. He is, he is uh, the shepherd. He is David's son. He's the ruler, commander who's brought a new covenant. Now let's go back to Isaiah. We're looking through the lens of Jesus now, right? Just going to read those first few verses again. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread? You know, it's interesting. I, just James in communion talking about Jesus. I, he clearly said it's the same stuff. He says, I am the bread. You know, Moses, God gave manna in the desert but I'm the true bread that's come down from heaven. I'm how you live. Feast on me. Live and find your life in me. So why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what is not satisfied? Listen. Listen to me and eat what is good and you'll delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I've made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and commander. Surely you will summon nations you do not know, and nations that do not know, you do not know, will come running to you. Because of the sovereign Lord, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, he has endowed you with splendor. So I'm just, on this last part here, I just want to encourage us to hear the invitation. There's an invitation there for us to listen, to listen to the Lord, to slow down here even in this, this moment. It's great just being together, but to slow down here. He's, he's urging us to listen to him, to listen and live and find eternal life, that quality of life that starts right now. It's happening right now. Knowing God is life. And we're sheep. Can I get a ba out there? <laughs> we are sheep, but we know his voice. And so to say, I don't know his voice is a lie. Right? That's a lie. Why would I say it that strongly? Because Jesus said the opposite. Jesus didn't say, you're not going to be able to hear my voice. And if you grew up in that tradition where you don't hear his voice, then you won't be able to hear my voice. He didn't say that. He said, I'm the shepherd, my sheep know my voice. So just, Lord, help us here to adjust, to calibrate to the truth as it is in Jesus. You know, I, I, uh, I heard this great story. I, I, don't, I don't, don't know how to give credit, so I, I heard somewhere. Um, but somebody had gone to Israel, and they'd seen a, a, this huge flock of sheep, and there were six shepherds around, and all of their flocks were there together running around together and they got all confused you know they're all just running around you know I'm acting like sheep running around and uh, so they're, they're doing that and then one of them goes you know whatever <laughs> does the sheep call you know hey you guys come on over here and but they know his voice so there's a couple hundred sheep and 30 of them work through the crowd and fo follow the shepherd's voice isn't that amazing I just was like Wow, we like let's listen for the voice of the shepherd. It's just huge. You know, down through the years, the church one of the ways the church has worked this out is through the prophetic gift of us listening to the Lord. You know, for our own lives, but also to help each other. You know, the prophetic gift, 1 Corinthians 14, 1, it's just coming out of the love chapter. And so it's the love is the context. Without love, whatever we do is meaningless. So even if we got all, fathom all knowledge and stuff, we don't love. And I just, I'm going to pause here because I keep asking the Lord and uh, I got rocked coming over, but I just, to the building this morning, but just ask the Lord for his love for people. Yeah, just ask, Father, give me your heart of love for this person. And it, it, will, it will rock you. I, I just I was thinking about some of the worship team today you know, and just got rocked, you know, just, so God, give us your heart of love for people, and so the prophetic encouragement then from Paul is, seek spiritual gifts, 
and seek especially the gift of prophecy. Isn't that wild? Like more than the other gifts. In the context of love, why? Because 1 Corinthians 14, 3 says, it strengthens, it encourages, and it edifies. It builds up the church. We were praying in the prayer meeting last Tuesday up here, and somebody just had a word about so many people right now just needing their head lifted up with an encouragement. Just an encouraging word. Anybody just... Has somebody ever prayed over you and you just were just like encouraged and your head lifted up, you're down, you're going through a hard time, whatever the thing is, and just that encouraging word, you know? And that's the context. Love and strengthening, encouragement and comfort is what God as a shepherd wants to bring into the church. And he does that uh, through us helping, you know, Father, what's your heart? What's your heart of healing? What's your heart for help, for wholeness, for freedom, for deliverance, all of these things. What's God's heart of love for this person? Because as the Father sent Jesus, he's sending us into the world. Same, same heart of love, that overflowing brilliance of the sun, overflowing love. That's how we're being sent out. He's already working everywhere you're going. Yeah, he's already working. He's already there. Yeah, like come you might come maybe no he's already there well that's why when people go and there's already people that have had dreams of jesus or it's it's he wants us to participate with him in sharing good news to people but he's already working there he's not not there and so uh even this week i got a missionary newsletter about uh just in the last few few months uh one of our missionaries got to be involved in helping uh just some people get reached in an unreached place. 350 people have just come to the Lord in a totally unreached people group. They called the Joshua Project who manages all those unreached people groups and they said, this one, scratch it off the list. It's not an unreached people group anymore. Yeah. Yes, praise the Lord because he is already, he's working. He's, he's working, he's moving. So how do we listen? How do we do that? We, you know, the best way to, to listen is to, to listen. Yeah, it's, it, and, and just slow down the think, 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 slow, just bring that down and get to stillness and silence. You may have to, and this is a, this is actually a noble use of your phone is to set the timer for seven minutes or 10 minutes and be still and silent. By the Holy Spirit, I, I, I encourage you to do that. I, I thought double dog dare, but that, I don't know if that was the Lord, but I'm encouraging you. I'm encouraging you. We, we've got to get, we've got to get still in our world. It's really practical because we can't, I can't do everything and you can't do everything that our world is throwing at us right now. We just, there's not, there's not time. We have to pull back. If we're going to do the prayer and worship thing, we've got to pull back. I can't do the nine events that my kids are being invited into and do what God's calling me to do in terms of discipleship and walking out life together in the church. You know, I just, here's the thing. This is the secret. They're going to burn out. You're going to burn out and they miss out on discipleship and life in the church together. With love. I'm, you guys know I'm not just, it's just part of it. We got to figure it out. I think right now, Lindy's really been encouraging me. Like right now in August, people are putting, the, they're getting their schedules filled up. Is this going to be a part of it? You know, is this going to be, are, are we going to prioritize spending time with God ourselves, with our family, with just a, a, a flow of life that is actually life-giving to us and not just running us ragged into the ground. So listen is the word here. Listen so that you may live. Um, you know, there's one place where Jesus really clearly identifies what life is, what eternal life is. Now, this is eternal life. John 17, verse 3. I think we've got it. That they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. I mean, so it's, it's life that is started. It's part of that life is in us knowing the Lord. I mean, that's, that's the life. And the really, you think that's something, listen to this, his own life is in us. 
by the power of the Holy Spirit. His own life is in us by the Holy Spirit. And he communicates what is of Jesus and what is of the Father and that shared love and communion of the Trinity together there within us. That's what's going on. That's what Jesus promised the woman in John 4, rivers of living water. That's what Jesus called the people to at the end of the Feast of Tabernacles in John 7. That's what he's talking about in John 10. I've come that you may have life and have it to the full. And it starts now. Part of the reason that we come together as brothers and sisters, as Antioch, Fort Worth, is we hear the story and share the scriptures. And somewhere in this, there's a virtuous cycle of growth that we hear under the leading of the Holy Spirit together, and it shapes us. It changes us. I'm not okay to just live by the story there. I want to be defined by the story of God and walk this thing out in a ever-changing, ever trying to follow, ever conviction of the way I'm living and ethics, what we do and how we live out our lives. And so, you guys, uh, there is a fresh invitation here this morning. And I just want to ask you to listen so that you can live. Hear the invitation. Hear the invitation to come. Jesus is always knocking at the door. He wants us to open and let him in. Let him uh, just have his way with us and walk with him. It's a free gift. It's the free gift of the water of life. It's at the very end of the Bible. It's a free gift. It's for everybody. I'll just uh, finish with this. Kim, that, back to that story. She said when people, she, so she does the hearing aid thing, and then they come back for a follow-up visit. She says, Jamie, it's amazing how many people are in tears for the follow-up. And here's why. When they follow up, they come back and they're thankful because they realize what they've been missing, what they haven't been hearing, but also what they are hearing now, and they're thankful for that. And so I just want us to be a people that are listening, you know, that we're thankfully coming back to the Lord, even with stories and testimonies of what God's doing in our midst as he's speaking. Let's stand up. Listen and live. Come on, team. Uh, worship band's coming. Uh, prayer folks are coming as well. Let's just, um, there's so much happening just this morning, but I, there's, a, there's a space here for responding to the Lord. So many, yeah. And I want to just encourage you. I, I'm going to ask a few things, but what, but what is the Lord speaking to you? How does he want you to respond to him? Where, that's a good question. Where are you right now? And how do you respond to what the Lord is saying to you? Somebody can pray with you. You know, just come and get prayer. But, but listen so that you can live, so that you can choose what really satisfies the soul. And it's Jesus and a relationship of life with him. So Father, meet us, whether it's something you're lead us to, leading us to engage in or something you're leading us to abstain from, whether it's an engagement or abstinence so that we can hear. Whatever it is, Lord, I'm asking that you would empower us by your spirit now to walk with you, to walk forward from this day with a, with a fresh hunger in our hearts to see you and to know you. Whatever your need is, guys, come, get prayer. Don't leave without, if you've got a big, something going on, get somebody to pray with you. Let's just engage right now. Everybody's, we've all got something we could be praying about. There's healing needs, I know, in the room. There's, there's, there's a, a desire for fresh hunger and a relationship to go deeper, it's needed. Front fills up and just pray with each other. Find somebody, pray. We need you, Lord. We're calling on your name. Jesus Christ, Son of God. Oh, meet us, Lord. Meet us.
Father, I'm, I'm asking that you would give grace right now to step in to the moment with you, to walk in the Spirit, 
to say yes to you, to step into the, the zone of walking and abiding. Lord, where there's some stuff that needs to go, give us grace. Give grace, Lord, to let go of things that need to be let go of. It means different things for different people, but Lord, help us. Out of the clutter, out of the clatter, out of the noise, into walking with you. Yeah. Jesus Christ, you are the son of the living God. We thank you for that revelation that's come to us from heaven, from the Father, and the power of the Spirit. And may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, may he equip you with every good thing for doing his will, and may he work in us what is pleasing through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you to be a listening people. In the name of Jesus, go in peace. Amen. Love y'all.